Ashley, campus pastor at St. Joe Dwy. This morning, St. Joe celebrated the ministry of Hebrews Joe. Hebrews Joe was a coffee house style worship. It was led primarily by Reverend Sid Gobby in the early days and continued to be developed by him and many other pastors along the way. Why is this celebration important? It's important to acknowledge the past, the present, and the future. The past ministry of Hebrews Joe touched many lives since it began. While the service itself had humble beginnings, it began to grow to a point of multiple services and required a wall to be taken out to fit all the people who were coming. The work that God did in the lives of those who attended is on full display today. The capacity and fearlessness to try something new, to bring some truth to the world in a relevant way, is in the very DNA of St. Joe and is what laid the foundation for the work of St. Joe at the Y. We are grateful for the legacy left by those who have come before us that paved the way for St. Joe at the Y to exist today. We are grateful for the people of today who continue to make St. Joe at the Y thrive. As the chapter of Hebrews Joe comes to an end today, we also look to the future. What will God do through the new expression of worship, the canvas, that will replace Hebrews Joe? What new people will be connected to Jesus because of it? You can only imagine what the next chapter holds, both for St. Joe and St. Joe at the Y. But what we do know is that God is for us. We know that God will continue to work through us as we reach people for him. How do we know? Because he's done it before, through Hebrews Joe. And we can't wait to see what's next. Do you have a memory about Hebrews Joe that you'd like to share? We'd love to hear about it in the comments. Or if you're not familiar with Hebrews Joe, have you been a part of a ministry that tried to accomplish similar goals with a similar spirit? You can pause here and let us know in the comments. In what ways can we take fearlessness spirit of trying something new and connecting with people? Can we bring to St. Joe the Y? What new people group could we reach? I hope you consider that and pause here just for a moment. Now we're going to read from Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 33. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far away from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then Jesus spoke to them, be encouraged, it's me, don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, you man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you must be God's son. Hey, what's the first thing that comes to mind after you've heard this? Consider that this is the tale of a church that has been sent on ahead without the physical presence of Christ. This was the environment in which Matthew was writing the gospel, a church adrift on the sea of persecution, and the storms were rising. If not persecution, then perhaps confusion, or apathy, or antagonism. But here we are, drifting, wondering if we can make it to the other side on our own. Then we see a ghost, or something. That's all we get, isn't it? A ghost, a vision, a hope and dream that we dare not place too much trust in. Jesus affirms that he is Lord of all. He is the one who can calm the storm. He is the one who is present even when it feels like he is absent. What Jesus actually says when the disciples see him is, I am, just like the voice of, from the burning bush. I am, he says, trust me, I am with you, even when you don't think so. Can you think of a time you can share with us about when you thought or felt 
that Jesus wasn't with you? Peter wasn't sure if it was Jesus. He needs proof. He needs to step on the waves to conquer his own fears. So Jesus says, all right, come on. And Peter does it for a moment. Then he fails and asks for help. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? Jesus says to him. The great work of faith that Jesus asks all of us is to trust in his presence, even when, or perhaps especially when, we can't feel it. At the beginning, we asked about fearless ways we can reach people with the love of Jesus. Sometimes it's hard to admit that we're a little afraid about reaching new people, starting a new program. But how does this scripture influence what the next step is for St. Joe at the Y? And here's a big observation. In the text, Peter's fearlessness leads him to respond, but his own faith isn't strong enough. His faith doesn't save him. It is the faithfulness of God in Jesus Christ that saves Peter. When Jesus reaches out and gives his hand to Peter to prevent him sinking in the waves. How does this suggestion of God's faithfulness, meeting our fearfulness, even if our own faith is wanting help, inspire us in the confidence as we venture into the unknown future? Does it comfort you to consider God's faithfulness? that will meet us there? Does it inspire hope even when we know there will be wind and waves? I'm so glad you've joined us for a digital circle of Circle Church this morning. Stick around for the next couple of minutes to watch the key three announcements. Have a great week. Good morning, I'm Ashley, campus pastor of St. Joe at the Y. And I'm Natalie Young. <laughs> We are so excited to have you in worship with us this morning as we celebrate the ministry of Hebrews Joe at the nine o'clock service. But a couple of things that we want to make bring to your attention. The first is that um, we are still looking for volunteers for Project Reads. Taya will be here at St. Joe after each service today um, to try and give you some more information. So if you are interested in reading to kids, um, you can see Taya after the service. And we have a really exciting event coming up on Sunday, August 20th at 6 p.m. That's a week from today. Come on out to Praise Park because Heartland Sings will be there with their mobile performing stage um, to perform a nice concert and we'll have a nice time of fellowship and music. Um, you can expect songs from artists that you probably know like Dolly Parton and Johnny Cash to artists like Carole King and James Taylor. So it'll be a really fun time and we invite you to come out, bring your own chair or blanket to enjoy the show. That's going to be so much fun and invite your friends, yes. right? Yes, it's open, it's free, so may as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it sounds like a great time and we hope to see you there. Um, the last thing is I want to tell you a quick story about Summer Shindig, which we did um, just a couple weekends ago. And we are so thankful for all of the school supply donations that you all um, gave to us so we could give to the students of Fort Wayne. And we had a line wrapped around the building at um, Praise Park and we were out of supplies by 620. Wow. Natalie like the event started at 6 and the families were so so grateful we heard from so many who said I wasn't sure how I was going to get the supplies for our kids and so that is why we do events like summer shindig we are so grateful for all of the ways that you all are faithful and fearless and being able to serve the families of Fort Wayne we are so excited to have you in worship with us this morning welcome to worship <laughs> 